Hi friends, welcome to Origin IVF. I am Dr. Rashmi Sharma and today we will uh, talk about genital tuberculosis and infertility. So genital tuberculosis is very common. It is a very big cause of infertility, especially in our country. So I hope this video will help you in uh, managing your situation if you are suffering from genital tuberculosis. But before that, if you wish to come to our center, you can see the number below on the screen. You can dial the phone number and take an appointment at any of our centers. If you wish to consult online, I'll, uh, you know, we will have the link in the description box down below and you can consult online. Now coming to the uh, topic of the video today, which is genital tuberculosis. I would like to answer what is genital tuberculosis, how common it is then what are the symptoms, how do we diagnose, what tests to be done and what is the treatment and what is the success rate once we have done the TB treatment. So coming to how common the tuberculosis is. So I would say this is a disease of the developing world. This is a disease of Indian subcontinent. Maybe in the West they have never even heard about genital tuberculosis. But in the Indian subcontinents like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Russia, this disease is extremely common. So much common that WHO has actually declared as if we are sitting on a time bomb of TB. You can you know, just have a rough estimate that maybe every fourth person walking on the road is suffering from tuberculosis. I mean, there's so much of bacteria in the uh, air. It is so common. And so tuberculosis, you know, when we talk about tuberculosis, the only picture that comes to a layman's mind is chest tuberculosis. You know, we associate tuberculosis with cough or chest tuberculosis. So yes, chest tuberculosis is the most common form of tuberculosis in which the patient has cough, lot of uh, blood, sputum, and it's easily diagnosable. But tuberculosis, believe me, is a disease which can affect any organ of the body. It can affect brain, it can affect spine, it can affect bones, it can affect cervical lymph nodes, it can affect intestine, it can affect the genital organs. So there is no tissue in the body which is immune to this uh, very dangerous bacteria which is mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay? So a tuberculosis which is outside the chest, uh, we call it as extra pulmonary tuberculosis and one of the uh, part of extra pulmonary tuberculosis is a tuberculosis which is affecting the uterus and the tubes and the genital organs. So genital organs um, uh, can be affected in male also, in female also. Today we will talk about only about the female genital tuberculosis. So if I talk about how common it is the prevalence, if we talk about the infertile couples, you know somebody uh, who is suffering from infertility, so in various estimates about 15 to 20 percent such couples will be suffering from genital tuberculosis. And if we talk about patients who come to us with the fallopian tube problems or the tubal block or hydrocell pinches, almost 30 to 40 percent of such patients may be having genital tuberculosis and maybe genital tuberculosis is the reason for their tubal problems okay so that's how common it is so that's why it becomes very important for you to know this disease if, especially if you're suffering from infertility now coming to what are the symptoms you know how do how does the patient know that i have genital tuberculosis so like some, if somebody has chest tuberculosis the the the, uh, the symptoms may be so obvious like cough and sputum and all that blood in the sputum but with genital tuberculosis sadly it is not so uh, apparent you know it's a posse bacillary disease in which the number of bacteria are small it's a slow growing disease in the genitals uh, genital area so the symptoms are not so uh, obvious okay so so many times there may not be any symptoms at all but so many times there may be some generalized symptoms and there may be some localized symptoms. So in the generalized symptoms, the patient may have uh, loss of weight, loss of appetite and uh, an evening rise of temperature. A very characteristic feature of, uh, you know, an over tuberculosis is that patient will have a little slight rise of temperature, especially during the evening, which so many times patient considers as, you know, just general malaise or fatigue. So we always tell the patient to measure their temperature, especially during the evening time and see if there is a, a rise in the temperature of around 99 or maybe 99.5, 99.9. We tell them to make a temperature chart. That could be a very important symptom of tuberculosis, which is low grade fever. 
if we come to about specific symptoms so in the genital organs uh, it may affect the periods okay so in the initial stages of the disease when the it has affected the uterus the periods may become very heavy periods may become irregular okay and then in the later stages when it has destroyed the endometrium the periods may become very scanty okay periods may become where the flow of the periods may become very less and sometimes when it has destroyed the endometrium completely uh, it there may be a complete cessation of periods so you know the symptoms can vary from very heavy period irregular periods to very scanty periods to having no periods at all how to diagnose genital tuberculosis it is very difficult to diagnose a latent case of genital tuberculosis because the symptoms are not so apparent so you know there is a saying uh, the eyes will not see what the mind doesn't know so the doctors have to have a very strong suspicion of tb to actually correctly diagnose tuberculosis okay uh, if we are not thinking tuberculosis then we may fail to diagnose it and what are the suspicion points number 1 if the patient is coming from a low socio economic status uh, because we know tb is a communicable disease and tb bacteria usually proliferates in crowded places in damp places so people who are coming from low socio economic status you know who are living in less ventilated and crowded spaces tb can really uh, you know spread very fast number 2 if the patient has some family history of tuberculosis in the past so we always uh, ask the patient was there anyone suffering in from tuberculosis in your family so your mother father sister brother anyone with whom the patient was living when that person was suffering from tuberculosis because we know tb is a communicable disease it can spread from one person to another especially if it is chest tuberculosis the third point may be if the patient has suffered in her past from tuberculosis so there are so many patients who will give us the history that yes i had gland tb i had chest tb 10 years back 12 years back or abdominal tb then also if her hst uh, the x ray which shows us the tube shows tubal problem then we also have to suspect or if a chest x ray shows some signs of tuberculosis so in the past if somebody has suffered from chest tuberculosis it will leave a pathognomonic sign in the chest x ray so these are the suspicion points in these patients we would definitely like to test for tuberculosis and what is the test in that test uh, there are some non specific test one of these is montuk's test and another is quantifron gold so montuk's test is a test in which a small injection is given in the forearm uh, which is tb antigen which is given in the forearm and the body reacts to that tb antigen and if somebody has lot of uh, antibodies against the tb antigen that area near the injection will swell and after 48 hours of the injection that area is measured that is montuk's test and similar to this is the quantifron gold test so uh, both these tests tell us uh, that our body is reacting to the tb that means our body recognizes tb bacteria has sometimes been exposed to the tb bacteria one thing is very uh, important here uh, for you to know that we should never start tb treatment just based on montuk's test or just based on quantifron gold so we so many see so many patients sometimes who have just one quantifron gold test positive and they have been taking tb drugs or they have been prescribed tb drugs that is not right because montuk score and quantifron gold they just tell us that yes my body or the patient's body recognizes tb bacteria it does not mean that the patient has active tuberculosis so many times just bcg vaccination itself can lead to positive montuk's test okay so just based on montuk's or quantifron gold we should not start the treatment the other t tissue specific tests are in which we take a small biopsy from the endometrium so just before the period if we take a small tissue from the uterine lining just with the help of a small cannula that tissue is sent for multiple tests so here also i would say that tissue should not be sent just for one test no it should be sent for tb pcr histopathology culture and afp smear okay because these tests are not very sensitive not very specific okay meaning they can be false positive meaning they can be false negative so all the tests are done you know it's just a matter of little few uh, hundreds of few thousand rupees but all the tests should be done so that we do not over treat tb and we do not also under treat tb we want to be very sure that we are dealing with a patient of tb and we are also want to we also want to be sure that we do not miss a patient of tb okay so that's why all the four tests should be sent and based on that the treatment should be started now coming to the treatment part so uh, when we are talking about the treatment part who needs treatment okay 
I would like to divide the patients into two types. One are who are suffering from overt tuberculosis. Overt tuberculosis means it is 100% TB. Like patient is looking like TB, patient has loss of weight, loss of appetite, uh, patient is having fever, patient has pathognomic signs of tuberculosis. Like let's say we have done the laparoscopy and we find so much of tuberculosis inside or the culture is positive, the histopathology is positive. So these are the cases in which 100% TB treatment is to be given. Okay, otherwise the patient will become very sick. The other type of patients are latent tuberculosis in which the patient does not have any symptoms. Okay, they, he does not have any, he or she, she does not have any symptoms, but there are TB bacteria sitting in the uterus. Okay, here based on the test, just based on, the, based on TB PCR treatment should not be started. But if the patient has histopathology positive or uh, culture positive, yes, it means the patient has tuberculosis bacteria, live activating active tuberculosis bacteria in the endometrium and the treatment should be started. But just based on TB PCR, the treatment should not be started. If your TB PCR has come out to be positive, I would say you should consult your doctor, let the doctor decide based on all the other corroborative holistic you know, approach we have to take before starting the treatment, before thinking about starting the treatment. Okay, so about the TB treatment, we have to be very sure that yes, TB treatment is needed. Before that, you know, you should be really uh, thoughtful about it. Number two, once the TB treatment has been started, this is very simple drugs. They are just, uh, you know, it's just a drug therapy of about six to nine months. Okay, so in the initial two months, four drug therapy is given. And in the later four, four to six months, two drug therapy is given. The drugs are very easily available on so many chemists. And our government also is taking a lot of effort in eradicating TB from our country. And they have direct observation therapy scheme, which is DOTS. So these drugs are available on the government centers, many government center where the patient is called in and patient is given drugs in front of the nurse, in front of the medical officer to ensure compliance. So why the government has done that? Because it is very important for you to know that once you have started TB treatment, do not stop TB treatment in between, okay? Because that is a problem. If you start, TB, if you stop TB treatment in between, it the bacteria becomes resistant. And that is the reason in our country, so many cases of drug resistant TB has risen. So once you have started TB treatment, you have to be very sure that you complete the therapy. Do not drop the treatment in between unless told to you by the physician. Okay, that's very, very important. Secondly, when you are on the TB treatment, sometimes the TB drugs can affect your liver. So uh, liver function test should definitely be monitored every 15 days to one month. You have to see, we have to see whether the drugs are affecting your liver or not. So this, these are the things that you have to take care of when you are undergoing TB treatment. Now coming to uh, the success rate for fertility treatment after the TB treatment. So I would say that if the TB has been diagnosed early, then yes, even the fertility treatment success rate rises after the TB treatment, okay? But even if the TB has been detected late, it has already destroyed your uterus, it has already destroyed the endometrium, sometimes surrogacy may be needed because sometimes the tissue are destroyed so much that you we do not have uh, the means to regenerate the endometrial lining or the uterine lining. So I hope with the means of this video, um, some of the uh, questions that you might be having about genetic tuberculosis must have been answered. Um, it, should, it should be helping you in your treatment. Um, I wish you all the best. If you have any questions, you can write down below in the comment section and I would be ha happy to answer those. And in our channel, we always have a live uh, session on every Tuesday, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Indian time. So we try to answer our viewers questions during that live session. So I would request you to log in uh, at 12 to 1 p.m. on every Tuesday to find answers to your questions, which we are not able to answer because the paucity of time so many times. Thank you.